Over the last few years I've posted quite a few videos featuring one of these. It is of course an HP 9830A desktop calculator. Now I keep referring to this as the calculator but in reality of course it's a computer. It was released by HP back in the early 1970s and uh, the reason that they marketed this as a calculator was because at the time computers were things like uh, the IBM mainframes and to compete with those and sell a computer directly would have been very difficult but by marketing this as a calculator um, they were able to sort of sell it to customers who then uh, realized the potential for this and um, it kind of went from there the uh, move towards desktop smaller calculators computers that sort of thing grew from there this is a very interesting machine I like working on these very discreet in their design so um, there are about a thousand ICs in this and if you've watched the videos repairing this uh, you'll see that they're quite complex there is no central microprocessor chip in this um, but there is a microprocessor system it's discrete in nature it's a set of boards and um, it, is, it is based around uh, mostly 7.4 series uh, ICs and um, it's very powerful and as I say it was released very early 1970s but if we go back just three or four years then what we end up with is something that HP produced that I think is even more interesting and that is the HP 9100B it's also a desktop calculator it's more of a calculator than a computer unlike the uh, 9830 but even so this could still be considered to be a very early computer this was actually released back in the 1960s it looks more modern than the 9830 um, because of the styling of the case um, but inside it's even more discreet in nature than the 9830 it's uh, almost all transistors and diodes for the logic There's just a, uh, a few ICs in there uh, but no real uh, logic ICs are used in this it's entirely um, transistor driven uh, also the um, ROM board is very interesting we'll have a look at that in, in a future video um, the memory it uses is core memory the what uh, if you're familiar with the 9830 you'll know that there's uh, two uh, separate lots of uh, ROM one's the system ROM that uh, contains the basic etc to run the system and then uh, in the inner workings there's another set of ROMs that produces the microcode operation of the machine the microcode for this machine is actually in what amounts to rope memory and so we'll look at that in a separate video so I'll go through all the uh, features of this in uh, individual videos there's an awful lot to cover with this machine it's a very complex machine very interesting if you're into vintage electronics you want to know where all the systems came from how they work and um, the kind of nuances of how um, systems developed then this is a major stepping stone in that process it's almost a direct link between the old mechanical calculators and something like the 9830 the way it was designed is very interesting the display is actually a CRT it's one of the weak points they do tend to uh, have particular failures that can cause a problem I don't know if this works yet I haven't plugged it in and um, there is a lot of work in getting one of these restored and working properly and uh, we'll be going through this in what is probably going to be quite a long series of videos but I'll go through each of the individual sections in quite some detail and we'll look at the way that the uh, logic system works the various memories in here there's several um, different types of memory technology in here that are interesting there's some that are fairly unusual the uh, logic memory for example is quite an unusual form in which it's been designed the display itself is quite uh, unusual it's got a CRT but rather than it being a raster display where it scans the like a TV this is a vector display so it actually draws the individual characters and we'll again look at that in more detail in a future video uh, what I'm going to do uh, to start with and I won't do this on camera um, just because it's fairly tedious and boring 
I'm going to go quickly through this machine and uh, have a, a very brief look. I'm just going to measure across um, some key points to make sure there are no shorts, in particular some uh, types of tube damage if you turn the machine on can destroy a lot of the machine so I'm just going to check for that. I will come back to it in a later video and show it when it's easier to do that but I want to turn this on before I start dismantling it just so we can see what it does uh, but I don't want to just plug it in until I've had um, a very good uh, look through this. It's been in transit for about two months so I need to uh, spend a bit of time just having a quick look around to make sure there's no uh, obvious damage to that. Um, now the other thing is uh, what uh, could possibly be better than repairing an HP uh, 9100B and actually I've got something that's uh, twice as good as repairing an HP 9100B and that would be two HP 9100Bs. So I've got two of these to repair I don't really know what the state of these is um, I'll go through both of them have a quick look before uh, we start uh, working on them in earnest. Um, if you're wondering why this one's taller, because they are identical machines, the only reason this one's taller is I believe a previous owner was so taken with this that he decided to fit some Greek pillars to the bottom of it. So uh, of course they'll be removed and will fit some standard feet. I've got some uh, original feet that we can put on this and it will lower it to the same height as this uh, one on the left. So. Um, not quite sure why they're fitted, maybe someone just wanted it to be raised up uh, off the bench a bit higher. And uh, But I will be returning that to something more in keeping with the way it should appear. So th these are quite nice, you've got the instruction um, cheat sheet at the front, okay, and the same on this one. And um, it seems to be in good condition, the, really it comes down to whether the CRTs are intact, if they've been damaged in shipping then um, it's very difficult to find replacements for them and that is one of the key failures. If you, are, if you do have one of these and you're going to ship it, um, it really needs to be packaged well. They, it uses uh, electrostatic deflection CRTs and these particular tubes are fairly prone to internal damage and that damage in turn can lead to uh, other failures within the machine. Um, but as I say, we'll come back to that uh, in future videos. I just wanted to introduce this project, it's going to be quite involved. Now what I would say here is that although I have two of these, um, I'm not a fan of board swapping so I will not be swapping parts from one to the other. However having two is quite useful because you can compare signals from one to the other unless of course they both have identical faults which they may well do. Um, but it's still useful having two so that you can uh, use one as a, uh, a comparison machine and see how it uh, behaves relative to the other one. Now because of the nature of the electronics in these, they are quite sensitive to uh, small changes in the way that the internal systems are behaving. And something fairly minor can completely stop these from running. So uh, we'll start from the ground. I will plug them both in in the, in the next video. We'll have a quick look, see what they do. And from that point on, uh, we will uh, move on and start dismantling them and uh, I'll probably do one at a time we'll completely dismantle it look at each part in turn I'll go through it in the usual manner in checking the boards in a static uh, form before we start to apply power we'll work our way through the power supply the CRT display the memory systems keyboard the uh, processor part of the machine logic control so all that will go through in quite some detail and hopefully by the time we've gone right through the entire thing uh, we'll have two working machines.